Hello everyone and welcome back to Triple Crown War Gaming where you join me, the Lawmaster, as I bring you my first impressions of the Legacy Army, the Lizard Men. Now now you're thinking, not the member of the Triple Crown War Gaming team I was expecting to see do this video, but you know, we like to mix it up, we like to keep it fresh. So I've got some elements I'm going to discuss across the video today and actually what I think I'm going to do is just sort of go front to back. Um, through the supplement if that makes sense and the stuff that I've sort of highlighted and picked out um, so come with me on this journey guys and I'm going to begin with the one and only Slan Mage Priest so I know there's going to be some people at home that say um, don't compare him to earlier versions of Slan Mage Priest from different editions of the game this is a completely different game you can't do that but it's very hard to discuss these things without looking at direct comparisons to what you kind of know and love from the past um, so I'm going to do my best to not make it all about direct comparisons and I'm going to try to be sort of quite objective about the Slan so there's huge changes to this bad boy um, but the sort of crucial elements for this game I would say is that he now has fly he has fly 8 so this means he's not going new units anymore now there are there are some pros to that um, he gets 360 arc sykes monstrous infantry um, and he does um, he does have a ward save if you get him near some croxigal you'd be able to stop him being targeted which is pretty cool um, he can still have his line of sight blocked with the way the LOS rules work um, he does have a, I might have just said that, he does have a 5 up ward save, which is reasonable, not as good perhaps as previous iterations as the Slan had. Um, but I have to say, overall, I don't want to start on a negative, but I am with this video. I'm just really underwhelmed with him. Um, I think he'll be in every Lizardman list, and I think that will happen because um, of a couple of things. He's leadership 9, which you don't have access to any other way. And he's also... A level four and I think the more I play uh, Warhammer the old world the more I think that a level four is is pretty much mandatory he's a must-have so I think you'll see him for those reasons he now only gets one discipline of the old ones which I think is a crying shame now I've seen a lot of people online really kind of laying into these disciplines and saying I don't think they're that great um, and I do hear some of that criticism I do but I think it's perhaps a little harsh in places, I think there's there's some there's quite a few that I think are pretty good. I really like high state of consciousness to make him ethereal. I think that's wicked. Um, I think I'd do that quite a lot, and I'd probably take some obsidian lodestones. I want to say they're called from the main rule book to give him some magic resistance to pump him up. Um, so I don't I don't hate that. Um, the uh, the becoming cogitation is the one that I see people talking about quite a lot that they like. Um, this one lets me uh, re-roll one of my d6 when making a wizardly dispel attempt every turn, so once per turn, um, and increases my dispel range by three. Um, it's not dissimilar to a wood elf item though, which feels much better and much more points efficient. And I think that's probably my big gripe with the slan is he just doesn't feel like I want to pay all the points in the world for him he's 285 base now I'm not saying he's not got an impressive amount of wounds and things like that but just feel like that's a lot and I'm just a bit underwhelmed by a lot of what he seems to do I'm, I'm sorry about that um, the fact he can't join units is kind of the ice on the cake really I know that wizards are generally better out of units but I think it would be nice as he's my general to be able to do that so, yeah, sorry guys. Um, I'm going to move on though because there are some things that I did that I do think is really good, and there's actually quite. I think if it's a Saurusy thing, I think it's really pr pretty solid, and I'll talk about why. Um, so I'm going to begin with my Saurus Old Bloods because these bad boys are solid. They are zero to one per thousand points, which I think is a harsh restriction considering it also hits you against Skink Priests, which is a real shame. But um, I'm going to sort of leave that by the side because I could talk all night otherwise um, about the various different things on here. But yeah, I, I think there's some really harsh restrictions in the army list overall um, at points. But um, the, the old blood I think is great. Um, comes with um, scaly skin sort of heavy armour, which isn't bad. Can take a shield, so you can get him up to a four up without too much trouble. I'm not going to make the obvious comparisons to uh, previous uh, rules. Um, does have Furious Charge now, which is great. And he kept 
five attacks from the previous set of rules and quite a bit of stuff lost attacks. So he's pretty meaty with five strength, five attacks, a weapon skill six. He looks tough. Um, and really, I think what defines the vast majority of really quality choppy characters um, at the moment, and, and unless something radical happens, FAQ or rules-wise, can't see this changing a great deal in this game, is the ability to take um, a behemoth or a big tough monster to ride on. And the old blood can take a Carnosaur, um, as can the uh, Scar Veteran as well, if I remember rightly. Um, he can, but I think the old blood is is the real winner here. Um, gets himself up to a whopping seven wounds. Gets himself up to toughness six. Um, but the Carnosaur himself, he's he's meaty. He's got four strength, seven attacks. Um, has blood frenzy. This is so. Um, becomes subject to frenzy once he's done a wound and can regain his frenzy. Uh, so. I, I like this. I think this is good. I know a few people have got a bit upset. Um, about his multiple wounds D3 now only affecting monsters, but he is minus 3 AP base, um, and he's going to have a, a, a stomp, uh, which is only 2, which is a shame, but they are um, minus 2, because he's a behemoth. Um, so I, I think this is a pretty tough monster. Uh, I think he's this guy on the back of that is going to dish, because uh, with some of the other monsters, the guy on the back of the monster is maybe not dishing out like the same sort of damage as the monster. But the old blood is not going to be far away from this. So I'm a huge fan of the fact that I can have a model there that's got kind of 10, 11 attacks. Um, with good strength and good AP. And um, when I look at the magic items, I'm going to pick a couple out towards the end of this video. And there's one of them I'm going to kind of revisit specifically on the topic of the old blood. But yeah... Um, I think he's good. I, I, I really think that I would have an old blood, probably on a Carnosaur, because I like the big monster thing. But I think he's also very good on a cold one as well, um, as they always were um, in lots of previous iterations of Warhammer. So, yeah, great stuff. I'm going to move on. And um, you'll see now on the screen it says Heavy Infantry. Um, and this was a way of me being able to kind of broadly talk about two units, which is um, I can have 0 to 1 Temple Guarding Corps, and I have to have a unit of Soros Warriors in my army. Um, and I, I'm not too sad about this. Um, both of these have got a really healthy stat line. Both Strength 4, both Toughness 4. Both have got two attacks and Leadership 8. Now, two attacks is great. So, so much infantry has lost its second attack. Looking at you, Chaos Warriors. Looking at you, Swordmasters. Um... So the fact that these two units, which are both core, have kept the second attack. Now, don't get me wrong. 14 points for a Soros Warrior, uh, weapon skill 3, does feel still feel quite pricey. 16 for the Temple Guard looks pretty hot, though. Um, so, but yeah, I really like both of these. The fact that I can have two attack infantry. I think that's massive. I think it's massive in a game like the Old World, where I know that I'm going to probably take casualties um, before I attack with these because they're quite low initiative and this is going to mean that I have less attacks coming back so the fact that the drop off in my attacks whilst it, you could argue it's more significant because I lose two for every model that's lost if I've only got a couple of models left I'm still dishing out four or six attacks off my frontage which is, is mean and could could get me a job done now um, I am going to blitz through this a little bit my temple guard in at 16 um, have got um, cold blooded which has changed slightly um, it now I think only works for fear and terror and maybe panic um, let me just skip through my book here and have a little look um, fear terror or panic um, and otherwise if you're familiar with cold blood uh, cold blooded from before you roll an extra d6 and discard the highest when making that test um, so still good but these guys come with shield wall and stubborn which is great um, so they can really be sort of pushed back well. You are going to have to uh, decide on your kind of weapon each round, uh, your weapon sort of when you go into a fight as well. They come with halberds, which are a really great weapon um, in terms of the sort of all-round damage they can put out, particularly with the volume of attacks that these guys have got. Um, but they've also got obsidian blades, which means their basic hand weapons are minus one AP, which I think really can't be ignored. And that applies to the Saurus Warriors as well, that we're going to look at in a minute. Um... So if you if you stick with kind of the hand weapon, they'll have a four up save in combat, which isn't too bad. As do uh, Saurus warriors these days; they also have a four up save in combat. So quite like that. Um, 
Moving on to the Saurus Warriors, they don't have the Stubborn, they don't have the Shield Wall, but they can purchase Shield Wall for a point of model, which I really like. And overall, I think infantry have suffered a bit in this set of rules. Um, they certainly um, don't carry a huge, necessarily a huge amount of kind of uh, threat that they may have carried um, at different times in Warhammer history. Uh, but I think both of these have fared pretty well in that they've kept that high volume of attacks. Um, and they're still tough, and they've still got a good save. So, yeah, it's nice that my compulsory unit doesn't feel like a real heavy tax in my Saurus Warriors. Um, so I'm going to segue. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to hold back. I could have talked about Cold One Riders. I'll let you have a look at those. I think they're pretty hot. But I'm going to move us on to um, something that did stand out to me, which is the monsters in this book. I've mentioned the Carnosaur already big fan uh, for 170 points he was on top of my Scarvet um, but um, I think that quite a lot of monsters looking at you Chimera did not fare well uh, with the changes to their rules um, they lost the sort of penetrative factor perhaps lost some weapon skill or some sort of leadership and things like that um, but I think that the Ancient Stegodon in particular has really stood up um, so he's Almost the same stat line as he's been in the past, but he's got weapon skill four, which I, which I think's ace for a monster. Um, strength and toughness six, excellent. Five wounds, tough boy. Um, he's got four up armor. He's a behemoth, so his stomps are gonna be minus two, and um, he has got three attacks. So not the most attacks, but, but, um, does come with some other pretty spicy elements. D3 plus 1 impact hits. Not bad at all. Um, particularly as those will go at initiative 10 and can strip away uh, counter attacks. The 5 crew have got poison javelins. Um, the stomp is D3 plus 2. Which actually means he's got a very, very consistent stomp. The worst he can ever roll is a 3. Now that's great. Um, Alright, he, he can only caps at 5. But that's very consistently reliable. And those stomps are going to be at minus 2. Causes terror. Terror is wicked in this set of rules. Um, really strong. Particularly if you combine it with a block. And get the terror in. You can really reduce opponent's leadership. And really force them to kind of break quite quickly. And quite powerfully. So I think um, the combined arms element with these guys. Looks really scary with that block of Saurus Warriors. That I've said um, some nice things about. Um, and then these bad boys going alongside. Doing their impact hits. Helping you to not lose uh, so many wounds on your Saurus Warriors. Who then have two attacks each. Which I really like at minus one. Um, and... Um, this boy's got the terror, which really helps with um, breaking the opponent. Um, can still be taken as a mount, and it's got the Howder Rules, Sea Tree, it's Chariot, don't mind that. Um, but there's a few weird and wonderful things. You can make an Engine of the Gods, which has. Um, uh, let's have a little look. Um, if you take lots of them, if you take two or more, um, you get plus one modifier to casting rolls within six. Don't think that's worth doing, if I'm honest. Um, probably wouldn't take two at 25 points each. I think that's quite a lot. Um, probably just keep my, my Stegodons cheap um, or cheaper at 2.30 they're not cheap cheap but we're where we are um, but the burn alignment is the bound spell that's power level 3 it's a magic missile with a, a range of 15 it's casting an 8 it's only 5 on the dice with a power level of 3 power level 3 is pretty spicy pretty high um, 2d6 strength 4 hits um, with flame attacks uh, look would I take this? no I'd leave it at home I'd just keep my nice Low cost ancient stegodon, or my lowest cost version of the ancient stegodon. I throw him in as a bit of a bit of a disruptor, big damage monster. Getting two of them into the same target is going to mint stuff. Um, their great horns are minus three AP at strength six. Brutal, brutal, and obviously the behemoth affects the stomp and that. So, yeah, like these. Um, sticking with a the monster theme, the bastilodon. I'm not going to get too uh, hot and heavy into him. Has um. His monstrous creature has gone up to a 60 by 100 base, um, if you had him before. Um, and the arc of Sotek, um, in the command subphase, I can do 2d6 strength 2 hits on stuff that's nearby. Um, uh, and, uh, and, or, and or, I think that is. I'll have to check if I can do both. That's a core rules question that I'm not totally sure off the top of my head. So apologies, guys. Um, 
But he can, a jungle storms within six could regain D3 lost wounds. Look, I'm going to be honest, I don't like the Arcosotech. I didn't like it before when the Bastion first came out. I haven't changed my opinion on it really, even in this new set of rules. What I do like is the Solar Engine, and I really feel like I would have two of these bad boys in my list at 175 points. They look mean as with these Solar Engines. Um, so they've got a Magic Missile, which he's bound to, so you need to roll a 7 because it's a 9 plus to cast. Um, and these are brutal. 3d3, so minimum 3, maximum 9, strength 5, minus 2 hits that are flaming. Horrid. Horrid damage. So I really like these. I really like my Stegodons. So I'm building a list that's probably going to have some min minimum element in core. Um, maybe a Carnosaur Rider. And then some, some of these monsters in combination. Huge fan of all of this stuff. Um, the Thunderous Bludgeon is just good, good fun. It's minus 3 AP, but it is only a... It is, if I remember rightly, only one attack. I need to double check that, actually. Um, apologies, I'm going there. Um, doesn't have a flank or rear still. Kept that. That's pretty spicy. Impact hits D3 isn't terrible, but it is only strength 4. Which is a bit of a shame. Um, no. No, I think I can use my my Thunderous Bludgeon. Yeah, I can use that every time. That's, that's mean. It does strike last, but I don't hate it. Um, it's pretty tough. It's got a free up armor save in T5, so it's not the easiest to get through. Yeah, I, I like these, but yeah, for that magic missile, they're almost like an artillery piece, so to keep it the back to blast stuff. So I think they're very viable. I think the Stegodons are wicked. Um, and I'm even going to talk about the Troglodon. Look, I'm going to pre preempt this. I think this bad boy still could be a little bit too expensive, but I'd need to see him on the table. 200 points. He's strength and toughness 5 with 5 wounds. Um, um, doesn't have an armor save. Which is a real killer for him. But um, the Skin Coracle on the back is a level 1 wizard and can know Battle Magic or Illusion. Big fan of Battle Magic, really like that lore. Um, it's an Arcane Vassal, so I can cast spells through with a slam. Um, stubborn, Terror Causing, Stomp Attacks 2, Immune Psych. Um, has Venomous Talons, so its it's its 3 attacks are Strength 5 minus 2 Poison. It's not bad. Um, I just like the fact that I can get a wizard in a slot that isn't my sort of character slot which I want to kind of use I've got to have a slan um, for the level 4 I feel like I've got to have a slan and um, and I'm, I'm probably going to want a Carnosaur because I think they're a really bad boy so once you do that um, I don't really want to and I'm limited on my skin wizards as well because I've got the Carnosaur Rider so actually having the Troglodon in the rare slot kind of gives me another wizard so there's potential there that I don't hate so um don't mind that. But yeah, the monsters, I think they're big winners. And um, as I say, I think their cavalry's decent as well. But So I actually think these guys could really compete because of that. And I think the thing that's really going to be the final kind of piece in the puzzle is the magic items that I think they can bring to bear. And there are some really nice looking ones in here. So I'm going to go with a rare one for me because I've been a bit underwhelmed by a lot of the magic weapons that I've seen in the old world. But the Blade of Revered Sunki, or Zunki, um, I think it's pretty horrible on that old blood we just talked about. Um, 65 points not not uh, the cheapest, but uh, makes my old blood strength 6. No armor or ward saves against his weapon. Alright then, that's strength 6. I don't mind if I diddly do. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. As the kids might say, that's the tweet. Um, that's really good. Um, scary, scary as he is something that will be a big problem for those biggest and hardest of monsters that everyone keeps talking about, the dragons of this world. Um, if he can, if he can survive the onslaught and not be killed by the dragon in the first place, if he's charged, the Carnosaur's multiple wounds, D3, that weapon, no armor or ward, there's big, big concerns, and I think that for me, with perhaps a 5-up ward save from the, uh, uh, from somewhere could be the way I went um, on on my Carnosaur uh, Old Blood. Very scary, very very scary. Um, they got some other good stuff as well. Magic Armor I quite like was the Heart of the Cold ones, uh, for plus one armor value. Twenty points does feel quite expensive, and it does give me stupidity. So I want to like it, but probably won't take it. Um, Talismans, the Glyph Necklace is absolutely baller. Five up ward and magic res two for forty five points. I pay thirty points for the five up ward, and I pay twenty points for each obsidian lodestone. So I've paid five points less than having magic res one, and I've got magic res two, 
and a ward, which feels great. That's that's a really good item that I'm a big fan of. Could also see that being good on the Scarlet, but can't combine it with a sword. Think I want the sword more, so probably have to leave it at home for that reason. Um, yeah, those those two in particular really, really stood out to me. Um, the blade and the glyph necklace. Like I say, hard the cold ones. I could take. I, I think I could see uh, some potential, but it is a risk. Um, and then the horned one, I also thought was just just worth a quick mention. Ten points uh, is for a Ghana cold bun. Makes the cold bun no longer subject to stupidity and ups the movement. This I really like for lone characters, the old classic um, cowboy, um, if you like, from uh, other sets of Warhammer rules. Um, I think that that's that's really viable on him because he's going to be a bit of a lone operative and actually could be quite scary because he's still got four attacks if he's the scar veteran and then the cold bond comes with a couple of attacks now as well and the cold bond has got armor bane i think and armored hide so he ups my save um so very quickly i can get to a to quite a positive save ratio on him without sort of too much trying so i think they've got some really neat magic items but yeah revered blade big fan glyph necklace big fan horned one really decent so yeah takeaways i like this book quite a lot i think it's definitely uh they've definitely fared reasonably well and there's quite a lot of other stuff that i didn't mention that i think looks quite viable too um i think these look like a real brawler army i think they look like they've got some really ace monsters i think they crucially for me they present a real challenge to the idea of enemy big monsters running rampant because of what you could do with that carnosaur rider um and and the big potential there and you could take multiple carnosaur riders 170 points they're not expensive you just put scar veterans on them and just let the kind of monster do the damage which is really scary i think there's a great monster mash list in that so yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, if there's things you've seen that you think I've missed that um, are criminal for me to have missed, um, or if there's some combos in there that you went, oh, interesting, hadn't spotted that one. Uh, I'll leave that kind of up to you. Um, so thanks for joining me, and make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and all that great stuff. Head over to triplecrownwarlgaming.com where you can become a knight of the realm and check out all of our other great content, and we'll see you real soon. Remember to tag your friends and like, subscribe, and share. Then head over to triplecrownwargaming.com and become a knight of the realm today. What, what are you doing, mate? Are you alright? Do it for Warhammer!